everybody, and welcome to a, another exciting episode of the Alachua County Extension Cord Podcast. Uh, today's episode is another plant of the month episode. It is March, and for March, we are talking about tomatoes. I am your host, DJ Dr. Carrots, also known as Dr. Kevin Chorus. I am joined by Martha Maddox, our family and consumer sciences agent, and Dr. Cynthia Nazario Leary, our environmental horticulture agent. And today, we're going to talk about all things tomato, starting with how should we grow them? Where should we plant them? What do they need to be healthy and happy? You know, I really like tomatoes because they're one of those plants that when people are getting excited about gardening, they always want to grow tomatoes, right? It's like that easy kind of tantalizing crop that everyone wants to grow. Um, and the good thing is that they're pretty easy to grow um, if you have the right, right conditions. Um, the main thing for here is that you want to make sure you give your tomatoes a nice head start uh, going into the season so that um, they have enough time to produce the lovely tomatoes before it gets really hot and humid here, um, which the tomatoes, you know, tend to not thrive as well in. So I encourage people that if you're wanting to grow tomatoes for this spring um, going into early summer is to get them planted right away or start your seedlings so you can transplant them. Um, and then you want to give your tomatoes room. A lot of people will, you know, they start off with the little plants and then they put lots of little plants next to one another. Well, these tomato plants, they're going to grow. They're going to continue to get bigger. And if they're too close to one another, what's going to happen is one, they're going to get crowded out, but they're also going to be more susceptible to disease and pests because you're just not going to have the right airflow going in there. Sure. Okay. So yeah, so I'll see out in the garden sometimes you'll see like the bush type tomatoes that seem to be standing fine on their own, but then you see some that need to be trellised. How do we know the difference or, or what's what's going on there? We have a cool word words for those <laughs> different types of tomatoes, and it's determinate and indeterminate. Okay. So indeterminate are those tomatoes that are usually going to be trellised. Um, they're going to continue to grow. So they don't have a really a finite growing end growth. Um, and so they're the ones that you're going to have to continue to support, you know, with all the various trellis, tomato trellises that they have out there. They're also going to probably have a longer season of fruiting. Um, The determinate tomatoes are the more bush type. So they're going to reach a maximum height and usually a maximum size, and then they're going to stop growing. The determinate are really nice because they're usually, you know what space they're going to take up. You can put them in containers. They're really good for container gardening. Um, and they usually produce faster. So if, especially if you have a short season or maybe you are late in planting your tomatoes, go for those determinants. Mm -hmm. Um, those are usually going to give you, uh, tomatoes quicker. Um, determinants though, a lot of the heirloom, um, a lot of the older varieties, those are going to be the indeterminates and you might have a longer season. And some people keep those things growing. Um, you know, they protect them from frost or they do what they need to do. And those things can keep growing for a while. Okay. So indeterminate, they're going to flower more than once, put on, put on fruit more than once, and, and that'll kind of continue to happen for a while, whereas the determinant, they're really going to only have one flowering and then one period of fruit set, and that's it. So, okay, that's good to know. Um, and is it, in in general, do you, is the bigger tomato, you see the big ones and then you see the smaller tomatoes too. Um, can you have both indeterminate and determinate big tomatoes? Because I think you said, you mentioned the heirlooms are, are indeterminate, and those are kind of a bigger Yeah, I mean, you can have some, there's been so much breeding with tomatoes that you can have like your sandwich type tomato, you can get some of those on a, on a determinant. Um, But I usually encourage folks with the determinant, those are usually going to be your cherries or your grapes. They're usually going to be that, you know, that vine grown cluster that you see. Um, But it's really going to depend on that variety. So usually on the tomato seed packet, it should say determinant or indeterminate. And then you want to look for that size. But, yeah, typically the indeterminates are the larger ones. Um, But with with all the breeding now, there's all sorts of colors. There's all sorts of types. You can have um, purple tomatoes now Mm. that they've, you know, they have a darker indigo color. um, And all various types of reds and yellows and tiger-striped ones. um, So you can get a bunch of different different colors going okay. on. And the, for, for those of us out there that like fried green tomatoes, there's no green variety. That's just uh, harvested early, correct? Before yes. it's ripe? That's okay. just an early tomato. And for fried tomatoes, you want one that's also going to be kind of firm 
um, so that when you slice it, it's not going to fall apart when sure. you when you try and fry it. Bread it up and fry it. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Um, awesome. Are there any other kind of growing things we need to talk about? I, I, I'm excited about this podcast because we get to talk about plant disease <laughs> and I'm a plant pathologist by training. So, uh, tomatoes kind of our trap crop for diseases and insects. It gets about everything there is out there. It does. So with the pests, I'll leave the diseases up to you, Kevin, <laughs> but for the pests, um, so tomatoes, unfortunately, they are kind of, uh, attractive to a lot of different pests. There's um, caterpillars and um, aphids and white fly, they all like to feed on the tomato. So especially for home gardeners, you just really need to be scouting. You need to be going out into your garden, checking your tomato plant, lift those leaves because they're usually underneath. Um, check for thrips. So look for like, um, you know, leaf development that just doesn't look right. Um, or even like flowers that might not be developing okay, that'll give you a signal that you might have might have a pest problem. And then I really encourage people when they're doing tomatoes, plant other things. What you really want to do is attract beneficial insects mm-hmm. into your garden to help keep those not so good insects in check. Um, and that means maybe planting some beneficial um, you know, herbs or things that are going to flower that are going to attract those insects into your yard, and that'll help keep some okay. of that in check. Great. Yeah, and I know with diseases, um, man, there's just a lot of things out there that will attack tomato. Um, and so there's things that you can do to kind of help prevent diseases from even occurring. And you already mentioned give proper spacing because increased sunlight penetration into that canopy and airflow will help reduce the amount of standing water on the leaves. And that's kind of one of the biggest things that leads to our fungal foliar blight development. So um, tomatoes will get, uh, they'll get anthracnose, uh, they will get... Um, powdery mildew is pretty common so if you can give them their adequate space and and if you have drip irrigation that's ideal anytime you wet the foliage you're creating in that environment that uh, is you know really suitable for for fungal disease development so uh, yeah make sure that you're you're and if you are watering and you only have overhead watering capabilities try to water it in the morning so that it has all day to dry out and hopefully you can prevent things like like uh, powdery mildew and, and anthracnose and there's a list of other things that that tomatoes can get but one other thing that you will see very very frequently with not only tomatoes but peppers as well but uh, it's called blossom end rot so it's the the bottom of the tomato basically so it's not the part that attaches to the plant but it's that blossom end or the bottom end of the tomato and what will happen is you'll see this brownish to black spot that gets relatively big on that bottom side Um, and it can oftentimes become fuzzy as if it's a fungus, and that's basically a secondary fungus getting in there and taking uh, advantage of that dead material. And so what blossom end rot actually is, is a calcium deficiency. So the plant doesn't have enough calcium to finish fully developing that fruit, and so uh, it won't develop correctly at that blossom end. And um, so typically our soils have plenty of calcium, even our potted soils. The problem is, is that calcium is only available to plants when the soil is saturated. So anytime that soil dries up, calcium is no longer available to the plant. So once you notice your tomatoes putting on fruit when they're in that fruiting stage, try to, you don't want to oversaturate them. You want to make sure you have good drainage, but you want to keep that soil continuously wet throughout the fruiting time of those tomatoes, and that will greatly reduce your chances of developing blossom end rot, which is actually a calcium deficiency. So kind of a neat little plant distress complex there that goes on, and hopefully you can avoid it. Uh, I had a hort teacher uh, when I was taking intro intro to hort back in the day who said, take a gallon milk jug, fill it with water, and poke a couple pinholes in the bottom. And if you don't have, you know, hundreds of plants, this is reasonable. But then you just set that milk jug right next to the plant, and throughout the day it slowly releases water, and it kind of keeps that calcium available to the plant. So, yeah. Right. It brings up um, also, too, that for plants, um, tomatoes like full sun. So also, you know, encouraging that right environment that's really going to keep the plant healthy. Make sure it has that full amount of sun Um, Because otherwise the plants can get leggy and they just won't um, develop as well. So, um, and then with that watering, I mean, the water is going to be really key, but again, you just don't want it to sit there either. So making sure you have adequate drainage. If you're growing tomatoes in a pot, make sure you have good draining soil so that their roots aren't wet, 
but they have just the amount of water that they need um, to develop a good fruit set. And also, if they're in a container, you may want to consider a slow-release fertilizer that has all of those um, micro and macro nutrients so that they can develop because they won't have the ability to reach into the soil and get that. Right. So yeah, a good fertilizer program is important, uh, but you don't want to put excessive amounts of nitrogen on the plant uh, or in the soil when it starts fruiting or flowering because not only can that bind calcium in the soil, but it also promotes vegetative growth. And at that time you want fruiting. So cut right. back on the nitrogen once you see it start to put out little fruits. Right. And if you Great. do see a lot of extra vegetative growth, it's okay to prune your tomatoes. Okay. They will take to, especially indeterminates, will put out these little vegetative shoots in between their nodes, in between the the main stem and their main branches. They'll put out these little vegetative shoots that are never going to produce any fruit on them. You can go ahead and snip Let's those, those snip those out. So. Okay. Um, Lots of fun growing tomatoes. Encourage, I encourage if you want to try tomatoes, try the cherry and the grape. You're sure to get sure to get something. All right, the beginner's tomato. Yes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks. So I hope we, you know, our viewers are interested and in put some tomatoes in the ground. So, uh, well, let's say you missed your dates and you just don't have time to be a, a green thumb, but you want to eat tomatoes. So, uh, Martha. What do we look for if we're at the store and we're shopping for tomatoes? Well, first of all, Kevin, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I want to say a lot of people call me and they say they're looking for their vegetable tomatoes. Tomatoes are not a vegetable. They're a fruit. Mm. So, you know, we classify them. And, and tomatoes is one of my favorite, like they are Cynthia's. But also in looking for tomatoes, I'm also going to address some food safety issues because tomatoes is the one product, and you're going to hear me throughout talking with you, uh, addressing a lot of food safety issues because of their thin skin. So we need to take really precautions when we're selecting, storing, and uh, using tomatoes. And uh, you want to choose a tomato that's really plump and shiny. Uh, you want that uh, tomato to be slightly... Uh, when you want them firm, you know, Cynthia made the comment about you want a, a green tomato firm, you want all tomatoes firm because if they're not firm, uh, when you slice them, they're just going to kind of be mushy. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> also, the longer they sit, the mushier they get. And when if you're cooking them, you don't want water. You want a consistency there. If I make spaghetti sauce, I want a tomato that holds its body, that holds its texture, that gives me... What am I drinking, tomato juice, or am I biting into tomato? So you want that tomato to be very uh, firm, but if you take it and apply just a small amount of pressure, it will give to you, okay. not a lot. If it gives a lot, you want to put it back. <clears throat> you want to avoid any tomatoes that have dark bruises, if they have cuts, or the skin is broken or shriveled. This will allow bacteria to get into the fruit. Mm. So we want to avoid any type of damaged fruit because it will spoil a lot quicker. And also, we don't know what has seeped in there. And this is how uh, micro, uh, you know, contaminants sure. get yeah. spread. Post-harvest rot. Okay. <clears throat> yes, the post-harvest rot. When you were talking about uh, some of that, if you cut into that tomato and part of it is, is black, or I'll throw the whole tomato out. Okay. All right. So we need our UF breeders to develop a tomato with thick skin. That still tastes good. That still yes. tastes good. <laughs> and, and regardless of the color, I had a, a lady call me the other day, and she said, well, I've got these purple tomatoes. And she said, how do you tell if they've got bruises on them? And I said, you look for the skin. You look for discoloration. You want a consistency mm -hmm. there. Sure. And, and on your green tomatoes, if you're going to buy a green tomato for frying, you, you don't want it bright, bright green. You want it to where it's, if it's a red tomato, it's got not red on it, but it's, you can see the red fixing to pop because the bite on it, a very green tomato will be very bitter and very, very tart. If it's starting to ripen, and when I say start to ripen, it's still green, but it's not that bright, you know, 4-H green, <laughs> sure. uh, that, that's what you want because the flavor will be there. Okay. 
Okay, great. So we picked out a good tomato or a bag of tomatoes, and we've got them home. Now, sometimes I make the mistake, I put them in the fridge. Yeah. Are you supposed to do that? <laughs> well, there's a lot of controversy on that. We're okay. going to talk about that. Basically, if you've got tomatoes that are unripened, do not put those in the fridge. Oops. Now, as long as they're... Don't, and, and you shouldn't have any that's bruised or anything like that because you, you're supposed to do your homework on sure. that and not buy any. But if they're unripened, if you have a good window seal, put them in that window seal for that sun to help ripen them very okay. fast. You, you can store tomatoes out of the package. Do not store them wrapped up in that cellophane package, uh, you know, at room temperature. You can store tomatoes at room temperature with the stems up. You want those stems up. Okay. Uh, the whole tomatoes should be stored in an area where there is no produce like meats, poultry, anything that can cross-contaminate. So you wouldn't want to store, if you've stored them, when you do put them in the refrigerator, you want those meats on the bottom shelf, those tomatoes on the top shelf, or if you have them in a drawer. My husband is notorious for opening those hot dogs, you know, and throwing them in the little drawer. And sometimes I go in, and there they are with my tomatoes, and I'm, like, <laughs> going into orbit. So you do not want anything stored that has juices. And also, you don't want to store your tomatoes around any of the other vegetables, too. Okay. And the reason is because of the skin, it, um, your, your microbacteria could grow sure. into that. You do not want to store tomatoes. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't realize. And they say, well, I've always stored them in the refrigerator. But when you're, you want to keep them at the body temperature of 55 degrees. Because after they get below 55 degrees, like if they go into 45 degrees or 40 degrees, that enzyme that is the flavor enzyme stops growing, stops being flavorful. And so when you take them out, you've got to warm them back up to the 55 degrees to get the flavor temperature, and still you're going to lose some of that flavor temperature. Okay, okay, sounds good. But if, uh, but it would probably be okay, like, if I only used half the tomato and I got a cut tomato, I could put that in the fridge. Oh, you always, okay. always, if once you cut a tomato, it goes in the refrigerator. Gotcha, and that's just to keep anything Covered from too. getting in there, yes. fungi, bacteria, mm-hmm. cover it. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Um, so obviously with produce, you never know what's been on them. Um, should they, obviously they should be washed or rinsed before uh, being used. All produce should be washed and tomatoes is the one, uh, produce that probably has the most pesticides on it. Mm. Uh, 80% of your tomatoes will have pesticides on and it. And that has a lot to do with all the insect and disease yes, issues that they face. all the insides and insects and disease. And also tomatoes is the one product that's hard to wash. You do not use your scrub brush. Mm. You just take... Cool running water. Do not, do not, do not get hot water. Get like a cool running water and just have the water running over your tomatoes for 30 to 60 seconds. Take your hand and gently, gently rub the skin on there and then dry it on a paper towel. Don't grab a towel, a paper towel. You know, not a cloth towel. Uh, Also... You really should store your tomatoes before you wash them and only wash them when you go to use them. But if they're very dirty, you'll want to store them, uh, wash them before you store them in the refrigerator. But keep in mind, once water hits those tomatoes, Mm -hmm. you know, mold and mildew will start uh, growing on that. Certainly don't want to store them wet. No, you do not want to store them wet. And also, you you don't have to eat the skin. The skin does have nutrients in it. You can peel it, and yes, you do need to wash your tomatoes even though you're peeling that skin because when you look at a tomato skin, it's very thin, and, and, uh, you know, bacteria can get in there. All right. So so instead of storing them, we're going to prepare them right away. So we wash them, then Mm -hmm. we need to cut that little stem out, I suppose. You don't want to eat that. You want to make sure when you're uh, using them that you cut the stem out, the stem, the corum, as I call them, and then cut the end off of them okay. at, the, at the bottom end, yes. Okay. So my favorite part, uh, what are we going to eat them with? Well, that's what's so good. Tomatoes, tomatoes, whatever you want to call them. They're well, you like tomato, food. and I like tomato, so yeah. maybe we should call the whole thing off. No, 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 no. Wait, hold on, I have that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, they're perfect on a sandwich, on burgers, and, and this is a thing... 
you know, we talk about my plate and getting your uh, half your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Well, this is so great because if you have purple tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, red tomatoes, you have got a beautiful, colorful plate and perfect on a salad with pasta. Man, I'm getting hungry here. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite ways is to have fresh mozzarella with or any type of cheese with tomatoes sliced and then with some fresh basil with some extra virgin olive oil or I like to go a step and kick it up a notch higher and I love fig balsamic over my uh, mm -hmm. mozzarella and tomatoes. Scrambled eggs, um, fried green tomatoes just can't be beat. I mean, you know, they are wonderful. And on a, a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich with a fried BLT, you know, fried green, fried green tomatoes. <laughs> In casseroles, they are a good staple of vegetable. If, if, you know, you're looking for a vegetable, you don't know what to put in there, throw a tomato in there, it's not going to run it. Salsa or just take and eat them fresh. But my favorite, and it, 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 it really is my favorite, and I'd give anything to have a piece of hers today, uh, my auntie made a tomato pie that was phenomenal. Mm. And I've carried on her tradition since she's no longer here. And my recipe is on, um, will be on the website and in the uh, plan of the month um, article. But I'll give you a little preview. You take, I, I make my own pie shell, but you can go and buy a pie shell. And uh, you're going to partially bake it a little bit. I'm not going to get into directions. And then you fill the bottom with shredded mozzarella. And then you put some fresh basil uh, on the bottom. Then you put a layer of tomatoes. You put a layer of fresh basil. You put crumbled up bacon that's been uh, cooked. Then you drizzle that with olive oil. You're getting hungry, Cynthia. That sounds delicious. <laughs> drizzle that with olive oil. And then you put pepper on it. And Kevin, you know my husband, and he's a meat and potato <laughs> guy, but he loves this. And this is a perfect with a salad. Or if you want to do it for breakfast, you can take about six eggs, Beat them up, pour it over it, and you have a quiche. Oh, my goodness. Oh. I ain't never heard of a tomato oh, pie. pie. <laughs> hey, it's wonderful. It's awesome. wonderful. Oh. Well, you, you just mentioned one of my favorite herbs in, in uh, basil. Um, mm -hmm. What other kind of herbs go well with tomatoes? Well, basil goes the best with it. Rosemary is wonderful with uh, tomatoes. Dill, marjoram, tarragon, and sage. You can use others. Thyme can be used with pretty well anything. But these are the key uh, herbs that blend well with yeah. tomatoes. And I did the other day some. I was experimenting because I always do the basil and tomatoes with the cheese, mozzarella and stuff. And I like dill place instead of basil doing dill. But the other day I was just in a rosemary type of mood. Sometimes mm -hmm. I get that way. And I took and I took my rosemary and I put my rosemary over the top, but I did not take it off in the little leaves. I left it on the wooden, wooden mm -hmm. stem and I kind of um, bruised it a little bit where my oils were coming out, and I layered tomatoes, mozzarella, and rosemary on the, the stems, and that was phenomenal. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Awesome. Oh, man, they, I am getting super hungry. So uh, they say that tomatoes are like the perfect addition to every meal. Why is that? Well, because, uh, you know, tomatoes are, number one, they're low in calories. Uh, the nutritional content is... Uh, Supports healthy skin, weight loss, uh, heart healthy. You can eat a lot of tomatoes and you have no calories there. And also they make, they're, they're the nutritive dense superfood is what we call it. And they add color to that plate. They add uh, vers versatility to all type of staples found in cuisines. And they just add texture and color. Awesome. Uh, so... Yeah, go out there and, and have yourself a tomato with your lunch today or your dinner tonight. Um, that sounds excellent. You ask a botanist, and it's a it's a fruit. You ask a chef, and it's a vegetable. What a diverse little uh, plant here of the month. So I yeah. uh, appreciate you guys being with me today and talking about tomato. So whether you call it tomato or you call it tomato, put it in the ground, grow it, go to the, mall, yep. go to the shopping center and, and pick some up and make yourself a nice salad or a tomato pie by getting the recipe on the plan of the month. Uh, I just got that uh, list served through my email today, so I, I know it's out there. The recipe's there. Go get yourself some tomatoes and have a great day. Stay tuned for another episode of the Alachua County podcast. Uh, we're talking next month about a similar plant, the tomatillo. So we will see you next time. Until then, 
enjoy. Have a great day. And goodbye from UF IFAS Extension, Alachua County Extension Corps Podcast.